was easy. Hi, so we're going to be talking about deterministic finite automaton minimization, which is a topic that I haven't talked for a very long time about, and I'm finally making a video about it. What does it mean for a DFA to be minimal? It means to find the minimum size possible DFA for a particular language. So that's what our goal is. So we're gonna be given some, let's say DFA D, and then we want to produce a different DFA potentially, let's call it D prime, with the minimum number of states and the property that L, the language of D is equal to the language of D prime. So we want to minimize the size of the DFA and accept exactly the same language. So the method that we're going to be using, we have to think about what a DFA actually means. So let's take a quick example. So if we have a particular state, let's call it Q and it reads an A going to a state R, let's say. We have uh, another transition called B that goes to a state S. And we're gonna have the exact same behavior with state Q prime right here. So Q prime on A is gonna go to R, and on B is gonna go to S, okay? So what you can see here is that the behavior of these two states is identical. If you're in either one of the states and read any character at all, let's say there's only A's and B's, then you will end up at exactly the same state. And then therefore, because these states are literally doing the same thing, and the fact that they're both not accepting, then we can merge these two states together. And we can actually generalize this a little bit further. So what if, for example, we had, let's just notice that R and S are not accepting either. Well, what if this A transition went to another state, let's call it T, that is also not accepting? And we would have to guarantee some other things too, but let's set that aside. So note that the A transition goes to a non-accept state and the B, I erased it, B transition goes to the same state in this particular case. So then we would have to guarantee something else about what happens after the T and the R states. If they go to exactly the same state, then obviously anything that appears after would be identical for both states, Q and Q prime, because they're literally going to the same state. Whereas here, what if, for example, uh, B on this state goes to some accept state, and then a B on this state goes to a non-accept state, then that means that these two states are not equivalent at all. Because if you read a B from them, you're going to, in one case, accept and not accept and in the other case. So then therefore, in that case, if we're in here, we can say that Q and Q prime are not equivalent. Because if they were, then that means reading any string at all will always result in the same answer of whether to accept or not. So if we read A, B in this case, we would follow the A transition and then the B transition and oops, we accept in one case and not in the other case. So that's what it means for two states to be equivalent. We're saying equivalent, meaning that if you read any string at all, you will be either in the language both times or not in the language both times. It's not like this where you end up in the language in one case and not in the language in the other. So now let's talk about the general whole DFA. So we're looking at a piece of a DFA, but let's look at a whole DFA. So let's draw a particular DFA right here. So here's its start state. And then let's have some other states in here, just some random other states. Let's look at two particular strings in here. So I'm going to call this X, and then I'm going to call this one Y. These can be obviously are two different strings because they lead to different states because it's a DFA. So now let's examine what happens afterward. So let's say that we read exactly the same string after we read the X thing and then the Y thing. Let's say just as a picture, just as a picture. Start in the start state, read the X and read the Z. So then therefore uh, XZ is in the language of this particular DFA and YZ is not in the language of this particular DFA. So then therefore the Z suffix, notice that there's a suffix, in both cases, that is exactly the same. So that means that X and Y are not equivalent with respect to this language. 
they individually uh, they might not both be accepted, and that's totally fine. Actually, if that was the case, then z could be the empty string if x and if one of these was accepted and one was not. But if they're both the exact same, and we have the property that reading something else afterward will give you being in the language in one case and not in the other case, then we say that x and y are distinguishable. So distinguishability just means that if you read the, uh, that particular string, actually both of those strings, starting from the start state, there's some string afterward that eventually will give you differing answers. So then if we have two strings that are indistinguishable, let's look at what that would look like. So then indistinguishable means that there is no string that you can read afterward that will have differing answers. It's always the same answer every single time. If they're indistinguishable, reading, let's say, a Z afterward, so, so this doesn't apply anymore, reading a Z afterward will have, let's say, it'll accept here, then it also must accept here because we're assuming that these two strings are uh, indistinguishable. They are identical with respect to the language. They're, they may not be identical strings, obviously, but they're identical with respect to the language in terms of reading stuff afterward. But also what we can do is we could, we could read a particular string suffix here, let's say w, and then that will, let's say, go to a non-accept state. And then maybe this one also goes to a non-accept state. So if it's the case that anything you read after x or y will always give the same answer, then they're indistinguishable. That's what indistinguishability means. So actually the whole algorithm for minimizing a DFA is determining what states are distinguishable and what states are indistinguishable. All that a distinguishable state means, it's slightly different than a string, but distinguishable states are a one of three different categories and it's actually going to lead right to the algorithm and it's really really easy so what is a distinguishable state so let's try to figure out whether p and q are distinguishable states one case might be that p is a final state and q is not a final state if we read any string afterward if they were indistinguishable then the answers would always be the same but it's not here because we can consider the empty string. If we read the empty string from either one of these states, then one of them is a final state and one of them is not a final state. So the second case is just flip this around. It could be that P is not a final state and Q is a final state. And that logic obviously follows. So then the third case is what we call the recursive case. So you can actually define this recursively. So let's look at the transition function from both of the states on a particular character. So let's call it A, so it's, look, the same character in both cases. So if it's the case that these two, wherever those two transitions ended up, are distinguishable. So if, if the result after reading one character for some uh, character A, then that means that these two states, P and Q, are distinguishable. Because wherever they ended up, let's take a look at what that would look like. So P on A goes somewhere, Q on A goes somewhere. And we don't know the status of both of these states. Then if these two are distinguishable, then that means that there's some string, I don't know what it is, uh, let's call it X, such that one goes to an accept state and one of them goes to a non-accept state then that means from P and Q's perspective, if we read A, X, then one's gonna be accepted and one's not gonna be accepted. So therefore, we can actually define this recursively, which is pretty dang cool. All that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a table that is going to keep track of these distinguishable pairs of states. So this table is gonna represent pairs of states that we find out are distinguishable. And then at the end of the algorithm, if we haven't found any additional pairs of states, then therefore those two states are indistinguishable and could be merged. Okay, I made this little DFA right here. Let's try to find the minimum size DFA for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little table here, which I'm, I'm gonna call an indistinguishable table, uh, which is going to be looking like this. So I'm going to have uh, a six by six table. So I, I forgot to put a three here, but 
I'm going to have a six by six table because there are six states here. And I'm going to put false in the state in the pairs of states where one of them is a final state and one of them is not a final state. So if I have two and five being distinguishable, then it's the same as five and two being distinguishable because it doesn't matter the order because you're just looking at pairs of states. So what I'm gonna do is only have half of the table here. Okay, so here's the initial table. I haven't put the pairs of states where one is final and one is not yet. So let's look at that. So five is gonna be distinguishable with every single state except for three because it's also a final state. It might be distinguishable later, but it's not right now. So five and one, that's going to be marked as uh, distinguishable, which I'm gonna mark as F for false, that they're not indistinguishable. Then five and two, that's gonna be marked as false. So that's five and two here. Five and four, that's gonna be marked as false. And five and six, which is gonna be right here, I'm gonna mark that as false too. And then the same deal goes with three, it's gonna be distinguishable with everything except for five. So three and one, that's gonna be marked as false. Three and two is gonna be marked as false. Three and four, which is right here, that's gonna be marked as false. And three and six is gonna be marked as false. We have no idea whether or not the other things are gonna be F yet, but all of these things are automatically Fs. So therefore they cannot be merged. So then now all the algorithm is, is to look at each one of these blank spots and check recursively whether or not the pair is distinguishable. And if we go through the entire table and don't find any new entries to mark as F, then we're done because there's no point in going through again. And then everything that at the very end, let's just say we have this, then that means that all of these states can be merged together, which is pretty cool. So now let's look at each one of these entries, one and two. So if we look at one and two here, let's see where they go on A. So two goes to four, one goes to two. And if I look in the table, two and four is not marked, so I don't do anything yet. So then now let's look on B. So two goes to three on B, and one goes to, I actually made a little bit of a mistake here. This needs to go here. And one needs to go to four on B. So then now let's look at what one and two do. So two goes to three, one goes to four, and three, four is marked in here. So then therefore, I'm going to mark one and two as being distinguished by B. So therefore, I'm gonna put an F here. Now that we've marked an entry, we must go through another iteration later, but let's, let's keep going. So one and four, let's see. So one and four on A, let's say, are going to two and four. So therefore, and that thing is not marked yet. So that's okay. Let's look at B. So B is gonna to go to four and five, and that clearly isn't gonna be marked. I don't even need to look at the table. There are different parodies of final and non-final. So therefore one and four, that's gonna be marked. Let's look at two and four. So two and four on A, those are gonna to go to four each, and then a state is always indistinguishable with itself. So therefore that cannot possibly mark anything. And then if we look at B, they go to three and five, and those are not marked yet. Mainly this entry is not an F yet, so I do nothing with that entry, with two and four. So let's look at three and five. Three and five, input of A goes to itself, and that obviously doesn't change anything. If we look at B, that's gonna go to five and six, and then therefore those are distinguishable, so therefore I do mark three and five. All right, so now let's look at one and six. So one, on, one and six on A go to the two states, so therefore they're the same on, on that particular thing. And then on B, they're gonna go to four and five, and then those are distinguishable, I can just look at it. So therefore one and six is gonna be marked. Let's look at two and six. So on A, they're gonna go to two and four, I have not marked yet. yet. If we look at B, those are gonna go to three and five, which we have marked. So therefore two and six, that's gonna be marked. All right, let's look at four and six. So four and six on A, those are gonna to go to two and four, which we have not marked yet. And then on B, they're gonna to go to the same state and that obviously will never be distinguishable. So we don't have to worry about that. So therefore this is not marked. Now let's look at two and four again. So now this is the second time through. Let's look at two and four. 
So two and four on A, they go to the same state, so that's never distinguishable. On B, they're gonna to go to three and five, which is distinguishable now, and so therefore I'm gonna mark two and four, which is gonna be F. And then four and six, we saw on, on B, on A, sorry, they're gonna to go to two and four, which we know to be distinguishable now. And so therefore, every single entry in here is marked. So therefore, this is the minimum size DFA for whatever language it is. Now let's do a slight variation on this, where I'm gonna have the exact same states, but I'm gonna modify the transitions a little bit so that we actually do get a smaller thing. So I'm gonna have this table be completely wiped out, but now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this transition be a self loop on six. This B is going to be a self loop on three. And that's all I'm going to change. It's going to be exactly the same DFA otherwise. Obviously, state six is going to be eliminated because it's uh, not, you can't even get to it, but we'll deal with that. Okay, so three is going to be distinguishable with every state except five, exactly the same as before. So these Fs are going to uh, all be in here. So not with state five, we don't know that yet. And state five is gonna be exactly the same with every state except for three. So this is an F, this is an F, that's not an F yet. This is an F, that's an F. So then now let's carry through again. So let's look at each entry. One, two on A, that's gonna go to two and four, not marked yet. Let's look at B, those go to three and four, which is marked. And so therefore, I'm gonna mark one and two. So that's an F. If we look at now one and four, on A, that's gonna to go to two and four, which we have not marked yet. If we look at B, that's gonna to go to four and five, which is marked. So I'm gonna mark this here. If we look at two and four on A, again, they go to the same state, that didn't change from before. If we go on B, they're gonna to go to the same parity of states. They're both final and that's not marked yet. So therefore, I'm not gonna mark two, four just yet. If we look at three and five, they're gonna go to the same pair of states. So this entry is actually never gonna be marked because it's a DFA, I'm never going to uh, get out of these states once I enter them. So therefore, this entry will never be marked and then therefore, we know we can contract these, but I'm not gonna do that yet. If we look at one and six, so therefore on A, that goes to two and six, which is not marked. On B, they go to four and five, which we know to be marked. And so therefore these states are indistinguishable because they go to a pair of states that's marked. If we go to two and six, that on A is gonna to go to four and six, which we know to, which is not marked yet. On B, that's gonna to go to three and five, which is not marked. So two and six can't be marked yet. If we go to four, six on A, they go to themselves, which won't change anything. If they go to B, that will never change anything. So actually four and six is never gonna be marked either. So let's go through another iteration. Uh, two, four, two, four on A, on um, input A, that doesn't do anything. On B, that goes to three, five, not marked yet. So that doesn't do anything. Three and five will never be marked. 2 and 6, that goes to A, 4 and 6, which is not marked. On B, they go to 3 and 5, which is never going to be marked. And 4, 6, we've already determined will never be marked. So these four entries represent indistinguishable states. So therefore, 4 and 2 can be merged. So what we can do is we can treat this as one state. Uh, in fact, we can even put 6 into the mix. That rhymes. So we can have it be looked like that. So that's one state right now. And we can have five and three represent another state. So I know the, the figure looks a little complicated. But so, so once you do all of the reducing here, what you get is something that looks like this. So you get state one that goes to on A and B to this three state Hydra thing. So on A and B, that goes to a state I'm gonna call two, four, and six. That's gonna represent states two, four, and six. And then that self loops on A. 
so that if you're in this bubble right here, if you read an A, you're gonna stay within the bubble, and if you read a B, you're gonna go to the three, five bubble. So therefore, on B, they're gonna go to a final state which is gonna self-loop on everything. Because in this bubble, if you read an A or a B, you're gonna stay within the bubble. And then, therefore, this is a minimum size DFA for this particular language. Proving that it actually is the minimum size DFA requires the myhill Road equivalence relation, which I have proven on the channel before, but I'm not gonna prove here. All that you need to know is to make a little table like this and then just carry out the procedure as I described. And then therefore you will get the minimum size and unique DFA for that language. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about the DFA minimization algorithm into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you wanna support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.